جزا الله أصحاب النبي محمد محمد جميعا كما كانوا له خير صاحب خير صاحب وآل رسول الله لا زال أمره What is the second aspect of establishing the the correct Muslim home? The second aspect involves creating an atmosphere of faith. Creating an atmosphere of faith in the home. How do we go about doing that? And it all begins with, first of all, you should make your home a place of remembrance of Allah. Okay? The key to establishing a faith-filled home is making your home a place of remembrance of Allah, a place where Allah is mentioned and remembered. The Prophet ﷺ once said in a beautiful hadith, he said the likeness of a house in which Allah is remembered and the house in which Allah is not remembered is that of the living and the dead, Subhana Allah, that shows just how different they are. You compare a house which the family remembers Allah, the family prays, they, they fast together, they talk about Islam, you know. You compare a family like that with a family in which the people have music and, and no remembrance going, it's like a dead person being compared to a person that's living. Subhanallah. Allah. So again, this shows the importance of making your home a place where Allah is remembered. And how do we do this? We not only remember Allah in our hearts, but by praying together. You guys have heard the old saying that a family that prays together is a family that stays together. This is so true. The Muslim home should not include the following. It should not include music. You know, you go home and you hear rap music, hip-hop, bebop, MTV. Music attracts the jeans. Music attracts shaitan, okay? The home should not be filled with backbiting, where you're sitting on the phone all day gossiping on the telephone, backbiting, talking about people, slandering people, gossiping. The Muslim home should not be filled with haram things, such as cigarettes, wine, pork, illegal sex. You got your sister sneaking men in at night time. You know, the Muslim home should not include any of those things there because anything that's haram attracts the shayateen or the devils and will take you away from remembering Allah. And also another way of making your home environment one filled with faith is by making your home a Qibla, making your home a place of worship. When we say make your home a Qibla, this means to make the home a place of worship. And Allah mentions this in the Quran, in the interpretation, the meaning. And we inspired Musa, Moses, and his brothers saying, take dwellings for your people in Egypt, Misra, and take your dwellings as places for your worship and perform al-salat, al-salat, and give glad tidings to the believers. Okay, so here in this verse from the Quran, we have it, you know, the tafsir given to us by first of all, Ibn Abbas, may Allah be pleased with him. Ibn Abbas tells us that Allah was commanding them, commanding Moses and his people to take their homes as places of worship, to make their houses become mosques. Why? Because they were not able to practice in their religion openly, because they were being persecuted by Pharaoh. So Allah told them to take their houses as their places of worship 
since they were not allowed to practice their religion openly. Okay? And also we have another verse of the Quran where Allah says in the interpretation, the meaning, O oh, you who believe, seek help through patience and prayer. So again, Allah was talking to the prophet Moses and telling him to tell his people to make their homes a place of worship. And the same for us too, guys. We should make our home a place of worship. You don't want your home to be void of that. Subhanahu Allah, the companions who were the best example for us in regards to their practice of this religion, they always broke their necks to make their homes a place of worship. They always performed their voluntary prayers in their home. Their voluntary prayers in their home. Okay? Because praying in your home keeps it alive, keeps it filled with faith, keeps it free from being devoid of remembrance of Allah. Okay? We have a beautiful hadith as to how when the Prophet wasalam, announced to his companions how they should not let their homes be devoid of prayer, one man came to the Prophet and said, O oh, Prophet of Allah, will you come to my house and lead me in prayer so I can make wherever you pray at a place for me to pray? In other words, he wanted the Prophet to bless his home by praying in it. So the Prophet wasalam, came to the man's house, asked him where he wanted him to pray, and he stood up and performed two rakats for him. Okay, and again, the obligatory prayers, the companions made at the mosque. But the voluntary prayers at your home if you are a man, except for Qiyam, uh, uh, during uh, Tarawi, during um, Ramadan. During Ramadan, you know, the Muslim men gather at the mosque and pray behind the imam. That's the only um, um, uh, voluntary prayer that the companions uh, 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 did at the mosque. But all the other voluntary prayers, you know, in their home. Okay? So prayer becomes a great way or a great means of instilling faith into your home. Because prayer is one of the best actions of remembrance of a law that you can do. Now, as everyone knows, a woman gets more blessings praying by herself in her house than she does at a mosque. But one of the questions that we get from a lot of Muslim women is, well, can I pray with my children? And the answer is yes, we encourage this. Because you are teaching your children how to pray. And this is known as spiritual training. Spiritual training. The Islamic atmosphere of the home can be obtained also through spiritual training. You should pray with your children because you're teaching them good manners. We have a hadith where Aisha, may Allah be pleased with her, tells us that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he used to pray qiyam or the night prayer at night. And when he prayed with her, he would come and wake them up and say, get up and pray with her. Okay? And so here you can see the prophet would pray night prayer, but he would wake up his wives and his family and tell them to get up and pray the with her too. This is part of spiritual training. Also, the prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said, may Allah have mercy on the man who gets up at night and prays, and then he wakes up his wife to pray. And if she refuses, he throws water in her face to wake her up. And there's also another hadith where the prophet said, May Allah have mercy on the woman who wakes up her husband to pray. And when he refuses, she tosses water in his face. Subhanallah, Allah, the rewards of waking up your family spiritually training them to get up and remember Allah. And this is a, becomes a great means of instilling, you know, faith in your home. Remember, environment is everything. 
Your environment says it all. If 